This morning we're going to be tying a March Brown clink hammer using a quill style body uh, and a new cool hook from Daiichi, the 1167. This is their official clink hammer hook. Uh, so I've got the black nickel finish one in the vise here. I've got a coating of black uni thread in the 6 aught variety. Uh, and I've advanced all the way back down to the bend. First step is going to be it to tie in some brown sparkle emerger yarn. It's going to be the trailing shock. And you want to be pretty light here because you want this to sink. Correct. So that's one of the things about this. This will absorb a little bit of water and uh, dip, dip the rear end down a little bit. Go. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, brown grizzly feather. You could use straight brown or a furnace or something like that, but part of the reason why I like the grizzly is that it adds kind of a depth of uh, color to it. You're going to have some variegation in there. So to prep the feather for a quill bodied fly, we're just going to pull all of the uh, barbels off the side of the stem. Because this is a relatively large uh, dry fly here, I'm going to make sure we have enough to cover the whole shank. Trim off the excess there. Kind of help with the continuity of the body. I, I like to tie down the first little thin part of the stem. That way you can kind of help uh, avoid the breaking. Uh, of the quills. It's always been a frustrating thing for people tying quill bodied flies. So I've got that there. We're going to start winding the quill. Now pheasant could be used here too uh, if, if people don't like quills. The pheasant body has worked well as well. Yeah, this is actually uh, was a request of yours because you like the quill body version. No, oh, I do, I do. I've seen it done with wire. I've seen it done with pheasant. It's amazing. pretty universal. I, I don't know that 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 body characteristic is nece necessarily one of the super triggers. I just think that this thing floats in a way in the film that just is ultra appealing to to uh, fish here on the Mackenzie Willamette systems. Uh, especially during March brown hatch when we have a few more angler, anglers out on the river. Yeah, it seems like those nasty days when they're trying to get up and out. This is the fly. Stalled out there for a second or two. There we've got that extended trailing body. We've got a beautiful quill uh, body uh, uh, abdomen wrapped up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use this caddis brown parapost wing. Um, you know, some people might look at that and say that it's a little bit on the dark side for a March brown wing. Uh, but one of the things I like, like we just talked about, those overcast days, a lot of times it's easier to see the wing if it's a little bit darker. It, they tend to pop just a little bit more on the on the surface. Uh, so I'm going to cut myself off probably about three inches of that. I want to leave some material to work with uh, there. So I'm going to take that piece, just a single strand, I'm going to tie it right in the center, I'll lift that up. We want to make sure that we walk that thread up a good distance up that that uh, post so that we can incorporate a bunch of hackle on there and that way if we uh, find fish feeding in shallow faster water and get a little bit better flotation. And of course the opposite would be true if you find them feeding you know on a, on a, a real still flat you're probably going to want a little less flo uh, flotation um, you know but, but uh, that's something you can work out as a tire uh, part of the reason why we do this. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is tie in. This is a Cree hackle. Uh, if you didn't have Cree, you could use a uh, single grizzly, single brown, and then mix them together, tie them both in, and, and wrap them forward. 
course I really like the Cree a lot. If you can get it, that's definitely the, the feather of choice. Tackles in place. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to dub the thorax. The thorax is going to be this red quill micro fine dry fly dub. So this is going to add some flotation. Uh, so that's why we're using a dry fly dub. Thorax. Now we'll take our hackle pliers. kind of move all that hackle out of my way and make a little bit of a head. Take my whip finisher here. Get that hackle back down into position. You can use the two strands to kind of help cock the feather if you didn't get it super tight wraps. The last step is going to be just to snip off the wing. There you have a completed March uh, Brown quill bodied clink hammer style fly. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I hope it's one of yours too.